Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here's some of the stories we have coming up tonight. Under a bill that just passed the state legislature, police pursuits will once again be legal in the state of Washington. Three million dollars from the Chelan County PUD's public power benefit program will be used to advance three community projects. And in sports, for Eric Granstrom tonight, it's all about playoff hockey. And of course, we're talking about the Kraken and the Wenatchee Wild. Authorities are keeping mum on the shooting that killed the Rock Island man early Monday. 23-year-old Elias Mora Ontiveros died from a gunshot wound, allegedly suffered in a gunfire incident about 1.18 a.m. on South Union Avenue near Pangborn Memorial Airport. No one has been arrested in Mora's death, although Douglas County Under Sheriff Tyler Kale told NCW Life News today that the incident was isolated and there appears to be no threat to the public. Investigators believe Mora was shot as a result of a verbal argument. He died at Central Washington Hospital early Monday. Kale said detectives continue to interview witnesses and follow up on the case today with assistance from the Washington State Patrol. A Kashmir man accused of a domestic violence assault in February is jailed on multiple charges. 25-year-old Colin Curtis Carlson was arrested Friday on a Chelan County warrant charging him with attempted rape, assault, burglary, harassment and related criminal counts. Wenatchee police say back in February, Carlson broke into the home of a former partner and attacked her, strangling the victim and threatening her with sexual assault. Prosecutors charged Carlson on April 10th and he was arrested four days later. He remains held in the Chelan County Jail on $150,000 bond. A 21-year-old Wenatchee woman will serve four months on home monitoring for acting as a driver for others involved in a gang-related shooting two years ago. Taylor Nicole Henderson drove two men to the scene of the shooting in the 100 block of Knight Street Northeast in East Wenatchee on June 5, 2021. One man was injured in the subsequent gunfire and multiple suspects in that shooting have since pleaded guilty to charges including assault, robbery and gang intimidation. After the shooting, Henderson later drove two of the participants away from the scene. She pleaded guilty in Douglas County Superior Court to one count of complicity to assault in the third degree. Henderson was previously sentenced to a year in jail for a knife attack in 2020. Under a bill that just passed the state legislature, police pursuits will once again be legal in the state of Washington. That is, under certain conditions. The bill just passed the Senate yesterday, 26 to 22. It allows police to conduct a motorized chase when there is reasonable suspicion of certain serious crimes, including assault and sex offenses. Governor Jay Inslee has indicated he'll sign the measure into law. Republicans say the bill doesn't go far enough, while Democrats say it unnecessarily rolls back police reforms that were passed just two years ago. There still are major issues on the underlying bill, the primary one uh, being the lack of the ability to pursue on auto thefts. Uh, we are now third in the nation in, in auto thefts, and we know, and there have been a number of incidents recently, and not only are these autos stolen, but then they're used in the commission of other crimes and some very deadly crimes. So there's still some major flaws. $3 million from the Chelan County PUD's Public Power Benefit Program will be used to advance three community projects. The North Central Washington Equity Alliance and TRED are teaming up to host a workshop series that will explore what marginalized groups experience while recreating in North Central Washington. And Earth Day is this Saturday, and there are plenty of events lined up all across the area. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. 
$3 million from the Chelan County PUD's Public Power Benefit Program will be used to advance three community projects. The Wenatchee Riverfront Park will get about $1.5 million to build a new splash pad and pavilion as part of the first phase of a three-part plan for the park. $800,000 will go towards an extension of the Apple Capital Loop Trail to the service center at Old Station that will provide public access to a riverfront viewing area with cultural interpretive sites. Lastly, the Dryden Wastewater Treatment Plant received $670,000 to aid in replacing the original treatment facility to meet modern water quality standards. The Public Power Benefit Fund uses revenue from surplus energy sales to support projects like these and the Board of Commissioners plan to allocate six million dollars for 2023 and 2024. The North Central Washington Equity Alliance and TRED are teaming up to host a workshop series that will explore what marginalized groups experience recreating here in North Central Washington and what can be done so all feel welcome. Belonging in the Outdoors is a three-series program held in May and June at the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center. The workshops will feature the screening of at least one film with facilitated panel discussions and breakout groups. First up will be a screening of the Expedition Reclamation film that will be followed by a panel discussion about what people of color experience in the outdoors with the film's characters. The first series will be held on May 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. Earth Day is this Saturday and there are plenty of events lined up in the area. Tomorrow begins Earth Week at Wenatchee Valley College with Zero Waste Wednesday and Thankful for Trees Thursday. Models will show off their creations made from recycled materials and repurposed items at the Wenatchee River Institute's second annual Trash and Show, that's on Friday. The weekend features two separate fairs in Leavenworth and Wenatchee, one hosted by Sustainable North Central Washington at Pibus Public Market on Saturday, and the other hosted by Waste uh, waste loop at Enchantment Park on Sunday. More information on the events can be seen on the NCW Life website. Coming up in tonight's feature story, on May 11th, the federally declared COVID-19 emergency will officially come to an end. We'll let you know what that means for you. And in weather, expect cooler than normal temperatures for the remainder of the week with a nice warm up this weekend. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. On May 11th, the federally declared COVID-19 emergency will officially come to an end. That means the heavy mobilization and spending on health education, vaccines, and other programs that flooded local health agencies will also dry up. The Chelan Douglas Board of Health voted last night to end its own locally declared emergency at the same time. That will put a stop to the emergency spending powers granted to the two county health district. Thanks to ARPA and other federal emergency funding, those spending powers have seldom been invoked. In tonight's feature story, ahead of the vote, some board members argue that the local emergency should be ended sooner than May 11th. Quite simply put, uh, it's probably time. Some people might say it's been time for a while, but because of the nature of the funding that you receive, uh, our recommendation is to pass this resolution as it's presented and end the emergency at the same time that the federal government is anticipated to end the emergency so that we don't run afoul of anything having to do with those funds that we receive. I mean, it's not gonna make a difference if you said, oh, we're effective today versus there. There are things in the pipeline right now, that expenditures that are being made that will be done by May 11th, and that's why May 11th. And, and there won't be any additional you know, funding grants that would be granted pursuant to a federal emergency unless another one is declared. And so not having an emergency on your books is consistent with, with theirs from a timing perspective. Any of our staff time that is spent um, currently before the, the declaration ends can be reimbursed um, up until May 11th. Uh, and then there are issues potentially with staff time that is used. So if something does come up with the review of it, um, and we end it early, then we are potentially not going to be able to recoup those costs. I really don't know that there's any practical 
impact that it would have if we you know choose to extinguish it now versus choosing to extinguish it may 11th and so i thought just from my personal perspective i mean it would be cleaner to go with the may 11th and you know mitigate the potential for there to be a financial um, downside realizing that operationally it's not going to have impact Good riddance, as far as I'm concerned. This is a constitutionally flawed document that we should not have approved in the first place. Uh, it was done uh, under the pretext of, of the COVID emergency, kind of the, the, all the unknown and the fog of war that took place in the spring of 2020. And I think looking back, we ought not to make the same mistakes that we made in 2020 with regards to policy. All right, let's take a look now at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great Tuesday. It was one of those spring days out there, wasn't it? We had a mix of clouds and sun all across North Central Washington. A bit of wind out there as well, so it felt kind of cool, even though our temperature wasn't too bad today. Unofficially at Pangborn Airport, we got to 55 degrees today, but that's still 8 degrees below where we should be for this time of year. Let's go back to 1994. How about that? 83 degrees, our record high temperature on this date 32 this morning and that was very close to a record low that was set in 1987 41 is where we should be for a low this time of year sunrise this morning 607 and the sun sets tonight at 754 let's take a look at how your wednesday shakes out at least temperature wise it will stay pretty consistent that we are today maybe just a little bit cooler tomorrow because we do have some rain moving in and we'll talk about that in a second but mid 50s all across the columbia basin afraid of 56 will be one of the warmer spots tomorrow and then we're talking lower 50s back in the wenatchee valley also for our higher elevations leavenworth you will see around 51 for your afternoon high tomorrow. Taking a look at tonight now, partly cloudy skies, and here's our weather maker that will bring some clouds our way. It will be a little chilly tonight because those clouds won't arrive till late, so we're going to see some clear skies tonight, and once again, temperatures in the low 30s overnight, and then by Wednesday, that low pressure system does throw some clouds and some moisture our way. We have about a 30% chance of rain tomorrow. Going to stay cool, too, with temperatures, as we just talked talked about in those lower 50s for Thursday. That's where things start to get pretty nice. Mostly sunny skies. There is a big low again off the coast of British Columbia, but a ridge of high pressure and there it is will keep most of that away from us and that'll allow us to warm up into the mid and upper 50s for Thursday. By the end of the week, we will really start to warm up. Even though we will see some clouds, we call that a dirty ridge, which allows clouds to move in over the top of the ridge, but still we're going to warm up. High temperatures Friday near 60 degrees, and boy, it looks like a pretty decent weekend ahead. Mostly cloudy skies for Saturday. That low just sits and lingers, so that'll bring us the cloudiness, but we're going to continue to warm up. Low 60s for your afternoon high on Saturday, so a beautiful start to the weekend. And then by the end of the weekend, going to stay pretty much the same. Mostly cloudy skies and fair for Sunday. Highs again in those lower 60s, and boy, nice all over the western United States by the end of the weekend and by the time we kick off your next work week on Monday we're back to the sunshine a big area of high pressure moves into the eastern Pacific we are going to be a mild once again on Monday maybe even mid 60s as we get a little bit later in the week that may be adjusted a little bit because it's going to warm up all over central and eastern Washington. All right, let's take a look now at that seven day forecast. 33 the overnight low tonight. Tomorrow really our only rain day. A 30% chance of the wet stuff and 53. And then that warm up begins as we get you into the upcoming weekend. Unfortunately, it looks like our sunniest day will be on Thursday because we do expect mostly cloudy skies then for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. But no complaints temperature wise through that period. Low 60s and we'll stay that that way on Monday, mostly sunny and mild with a high Monday of 61. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, your sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this.
Wenatchee Wild host the Penticton Bees in Game 3 of the BCHL Interior Conference semifinal playoffs tonight. Penticton grabbed a 2-0 lead in the best of seven series with two wins at the South Okanagan Event Center last weekend. Wild hoping for a good turnout at the Town Toyota Center for tonight's game to whip up some home ice magic. Broadcast voice of the Wild Austin Drade says everything is a little tenser in the postseason. The game is always more intense, it's always uh, faster paced uh, than it is uh, during the regular season. The, there's just more on the line for every single bounce, every single shift. So uh, all the, uh, the in-game stuff is pretty much the same, but uh, the, uh, the giveaways, uh, a lot of the, the extra stuff that comes with the regular season, that goes away and, uh, and with the playoffs, the game is the thing when, uh, when you come out to the, uh, to the hockey game. But, Tickets are only 13 bucks, so uh, get any seat in the bowl that you like and uh, come out and cheer these guys on and see if we can uh, at least get one or maybe even get this thing tied up going back to Penticton. So game three tonight, game four also uh, tomorrow night at the Town Toyota Center starts at 6 o'clock. Well, this is the time of year high schools begin filling coaching positions for fall and winter programs. And two varsity hires were announced this week after a two-year hiatus. Levi Hyen is back coaching the Cashmere Boys basketball team. Keith Boyd stepped in when Hyen announced he was stepping down following the 2021 season with health issues. Hyen coached the Bulldogs from 2014 to 2021. Meanwhile, Waterville Mansfield's loss is Eastmont gain. Joel Barnes is leaving the Shockers to take the head coaching position with the Wildcats. The Waterville graduate was an assistant with the Eastmont uh, girls program for six years and now takes over for the Wildcats where they were led by uh, Keyshawn Williams for just a season. Well, typically, by the way, all high school coaching positions are year to year with coaches having to reapply for the job every season. A couple of boys soccer matches on Monday. Checking the Les Schwab scoreboard. Chelan blanked Olmack 2-0 while Manson topped Orville 3 won. Games underway earlier today. Tenasca to Brewster. Uh, uh, also, Pateras visiting Liberty Bell. Bridgeport hosting Oroville. Manson taking on Okanagan. Uh, the later games, East Valley at Ifredic. Casper traveling to Cascade. And tonight, Moses Lake at Eastmont. Wenatchee's at Sunnyside. Speaking of, the Wildcats Stadium is the site for the Wildcats and Mavericks tonight here on the NCW Live Channel. Sebastian Morag and Matt Wisen have the call with the pregame at 6.50 both on TV and our Facebook stream. Well, a very busy base Baseball schedule got underway earlier today. Brewster visiting Chelan. Cashmere traveling to Omak. Okanagan hosting Liberty Bell. Manson's at Oroville. Tenasca taking on Lake Roosevelt. Moses Lake Christian playing at Waterville Mansfield. Wenatchee hosting Eastmont to Rec Park. That's uh, 5 o'clock same time for Moses Lake at Davis. Underway, Afreda uh, as uh, hosting College Place coming up at 5.30. Fast pitch softball schedule. Uh, one doubleheader earlier today. Waterville hosting Elmira Cooley Heartline. Wenatchee at Eastmont. Omak hosting Cashmere. Mayor Quincy's at Cascade, Bridgeport hosting Chelan, Lake Roosevelt's at Tenasket, and Manson visiting Oroville. Also in prep tennis today, Eastmont was hosting Moses Lake at the Rack, while Wenatchee's on the road at Davis. East Valley's at Efreda, Cashmere hosting Cascade, Omax in Chelan, Oroville traveling to Liberty Bell. Oh, it is a big night for Kraken fans. Seattle is only in its second year of existence. They'll begin the Stanley Cup playoffs tonight in Denver. The Colorado Avalanche await the Kraken for the first round. Best of seven series. Coach Dave Haxtall says Seattle has taken advantage of the last few days to get some good practice in. We've, we've spent time on ourselves. That's, you know, we've, we've had such little practice time uh, over the last month that we've spent a lot of time on ourselves here. Just, the, you know, the areas that... Um, over the last month, we've been looking at cleaning up on video and, and in different ways. Uh, we've been, you know, we've had a chance to just to touch on those in practice. And like I said, I said yesterday, there's, you know, we're not reinventing anything. There's nothing new. It's it's a matter of cleaning up a couple of things. Um, you know, putting a point of emphasis on a couple of things that might pertain to the series, um, but as nothing new for our guys. You know, hockey playoffs, they usually get that beard going. Coach Haxtall just got the little goat going there. Avalanche won the Central Division of the NHL's Western Conference, and even though Seattle took two of three from them during the season, Haxtall knows the Kraken will have their hands full. Those guys on the back end skate extremely well. They're, they're involved in the play, you know, in a 200-foot sense, you know, whether it's off of, you know, off of uh, the breakout and the rush or, you know, in the offensive zone, they're very active and very talented. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's an extremely talented group. So uh, part of that, you know, starts with our four check. Um, you know, they're a, tough, they're a tough group to contain, but it, it starts there for sure. And then obviously there's a lot more to it as you go 200 feet. 
Tonight's game in Denver starts at 7 o'clock. It's on Root Sports Northwest and ESPN. Well, the Mariners' four-game winning streak came to an end in a 7-3 loss to Milwaukee last night. Brewers touched up Chris Flexen for three runs in the second inning before Seattle could respond with Cal Raleigh's homer in the third. Despite another home run from Julio Rodriguez, Ems just couldn't muster the offense to get the win. Ball and strike to Cal Raleigh. Raleigh out towards the gap in right center field. Driven well, driven back, and it's gone. Next pitch. Swung on line drive into the gap. Left center field. It's going to roll. And on his horse is J.P. Crawford coming to third, getting the wave on. He's going to score standing up. RBI double by Ty France. Ty France again doing Ty France things with an RBI. His 12th of the season is eighth double of the season. Man, oh man, that thing was laced. Line drive center field, base hit, William Contreras. This is Polk's right center field. Julio tags it, gone. Home run, Julio Rodriguez, number three. He's such a smart hitter. This one, 395 feet, opposite field to right center. A curveball that Bush just leaves up in the zone. And Julio Rodriguez just crushes this ball to right center field. Two on with two out. And Void on the ground to short. And it's right through the wickets. They're going to send Roddy Telez. Here's the throw from Kelnick. It goes all the way through. Telez is safe. Kelnick. Check swing tapper right back to the mound. Pyomps has it. And now Devin Williams can take a seat and enjoy this 7-3 victory. The Brewers take game one here in the Emerald City. Now game two featuring Lobert Gilbert on the mound for Seattle. It's on Root Sports Northwest Plus since you got hockey on the other channel. That's sports. Happy Tuesday. On the next edition of my program, Lyle Marquardt will be joining me from the Greater Wenatchee Arbor Day committee. Uh, you got a busy Saturday, uh, not only here at the Pibus, but all over North Central Washington. It's that time of the year again, Lyle. Yes, we do. We're having our plant sale uh, Saturday uh, the 22nd uh, here in East Wenatchee and Eniat and Kashmir. Uh, and uh, it's, get down here early, get your plants, and as a do $3 donation, such a donation, you can donate more. And the plants are specifically selected to go really good with the climate here in North Central Washington. Lyle would be my guest on the next edition of Wake Up Anachi Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us. Have a great night.